how are you, buddy? How's everything going? Thanks for joining us again. I'm, I'm glad these uh, 36 weeks, or at least give you something to do. I'm sure that first week before, that was a, a lot more fun. on. Hi, Marcy. Judy, glad to see you. joining us. Long time no see. Donna, how are you? And uh, happy birthday to Joey. And uh, who else? Are you? Oh, Dubax. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hope you're safe. Karen. Just get my... Huh? I'm leaving my lane. I, I, gotta, I gotta shut up. I'm gonna just keep my mouth shut. When it comes to talking. That was a train song that people get ready. They just get on board. So we're gonna do another train song. On a long summer's evening, on a train bound for nowhere, met up with a gambler. We were both too tired to sleep. So we took a turn to stand Out the window at the darkness Till the boredom overtook us We began to speak We said, son, I made a life Out of reading people's faces 
Knowing what the cards were, probably they held their eyes. And if you don't mind me saying, I can see your outer faces, your taste of your instinct. I'll give you some advice. So I handed him my bottle, and he drank down my last swallow. Then he bummed a cigarette and asked me for a light. And the night was deathly quiet. And his face lost all expression. Said, if you're gonna play as a boy, you gotta learn to play it right. You got to go away. Knowing what to throw away, knowing what to keep. Cause every hand's a winner, and every hand's a loser. And the best that you can hope for is to die in your sleep. When he finished speaking, he turned back toward the window, crushed out his cigarette, faded off to sleep. And somewhere in the dark. Sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the deal is done, you got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the deal is done.
I was a little Johnny Cash. How's everybody doing tonight? We have a smaller group tonight, it looks like, but that's great. Little, maybe we'll get some more people join us, joining us in a little while. We've got a little cold here around our house the last day or two with the rain. Uh, we had a beautiful, beautiful couple days, though, so can't complain about that. Hope everybody's staying safe and was able to get a little bit of that nice weather before this bad stuff moved in, but I'm going to grab a little drink tonight. I salute everybody. Welcome to Quarantunes number 36. 36. Wow. I salute. Prost. Cheers. Slancha. Uh, Chentan. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm losing. I'm losing words. So, I'm going to do a song tonight. Again, I've, I've done this before. Only because... I think we need this in our country, and I think we need to remember how beautiful America is. Um, those train songs reminded me of traveling. We've, we've taken the auto train from, from Lorton, Virginia. So Edie and I have driven from New Jersey, driven to Lorton, Virginia, which is right outside of Washington, D.C. And, um, and you put your car on an Amtrak auto train. They load it on for you. We end up getting a small little sleeping cabin. Um, we hang out there. We have our electronic devices. We watch, we watch movies and all kinds of stuff. We read. We just hang out and we spend the time in there. And the train takes us. It leaves the station around 4 o'clock at night, 4 p.m. And then it, it goes south. Um, and it ends up in, in um, what is it, Sanford, Florida? Sanford, Florida, just above Orlando. And um, it, it pulls in there around 7 in the morning. So we spend the night, and obviously before quarantine, we would go to the bar car and have a, have a couple of drinks and socialize with some of the people there. Um, they usually show movies in there at night also. Um, and then we go for dinner in the, in the dining car, and we always bring wine with us, so we sit in our own cabin with some snacks and a bottle of wine. And, and kind of hang out in there. And then in the morning we get up, we take a shower, and we end up going for breakfast in the dining car again. And by that time, we're in Florida. We've had a good night's sleep. And uh, it was, it's a great way to travel. And there's so many things I really enjoy being on that train and going through these little towns and just looking out the window at all these great sights. And it, it, it's, it's awesome. And I really want to do a train trip when this whole thing is over again because uh, I think that would be a really cool thing to see the country. Which brought me back to, let's do this song. So I used to do it in my elementary school class. I think in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, we used to sing every single day. So if you know the song, sing it. I've shortened it to half the amount of verses that it actually has. But... I will sing the first verse, and I will use it as my last verse as well. So if you don't know the, the verses in between, I'm sure you know that first verse, so we'll end off with a nice big one. So sing along with me. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of green, for Thank you. 
Mrs. Walsh was Mrs. Walsh was my kindergarten teacher and we sang that a lot in the morning and then I had Mrs. Daly in first grade who sang it every morning and then Mrs. Gemsky would play the piano in second grade and she would sing I was usually in the coat room then I don't know I'd always get in trouble in that class I never did anything I'm losing, I lost my capo. Let me just make sure this is tuned because. So, did anybody watch the CMAs the other night? I heard it was a great show. Edie and I were. We were turning it on, and then we got kind of got an important phone call, so we kind of we kind of paused it and said we'll get back to this. And then the phone call lasted almost two hours, but it was worth it. And we never got back to that because at that point it was like bedtime, and I'm going to have to catch it in in, in um, you know on, on demand or something. But I heard it was a great show. Um, but then I read something today that there's a few people that were upset because they did some great tributes to the, to the artists that, that died this year. I heard there was an unbelievable tribute to Charlie Daniels and, and Kenny Rogers and, and, and a few others. Um, but a few people had said that they thought there were a couple of artists that were, were left out that really, really should have been memorialized there because they paved the right way for all these other guys. Um, so I'm going to do a song from each of theirs, their catalog, just because if they weren't heard about through CMAs, we'll do our little part here. It's a grand difference, but it's my feeling too. So you know what? Here's a song by John Prime. I've been down this road before I remember every tree Every single blade of grass Was a special place for me And I remember every town Every hotel room Every song I ever sang Swimming pools of butterflies that slip 
mentioned that they thought really should have been was Jerry Jeff Walker. And um, here's probably his most fam famous song. Not covered by him, but he wrote it.
Rest in peace, Mr. Jerry Jeff Walker. That's part of life, right? <laughs> I remember hearing that a long time ago. This, you start dying the day you're born. I don't like to think of it that way, but <laughs> I guess for every season. Decided that to be the theme because you know what there's a season for everything so we may be heading into another season Edie will talk more about that but um, we just thought it would be an appropriate appropriate theme and a good song for this Oh, 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 oh. 
So it's World Be Kind Day. So we've, we've been being kind every Friday night, right? We've been saying, let's just be kind. I think we shouldn't devote a day to that. We should just devote our lives to being kind. If we could all just be kind to one another, um, what a nice world this would be, wouldn't it? Um, I'm going to do a song by Neil Young. Sorry, Phil. Barbara's birthday, I'm not doing any Neil Diamond, just for her. So, I'm gonna do uh, Heart of Gold.
Neil Young. Here's a song that I loved for pretty much almost my entire life from the first time I heard it. Thought it was a great song. And, um, and then I heard it a couple years ago in a whole different um, version by a heavy metal guy. And I was like, wow, it blew me away never did it to begin with because I never thought I could change what it was and it gave me some ideas so I've been wanting to do this song so I finally had the courage to uh, to approach it so I hope you enjoy it it's my rendition of an old classic that I just love <laughs> Darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Because a vision softly creeping Left the seeds while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains Within the sound of silence I walk alone, narrow streets of cobblestone, near the hill of a street land, I turn my daughter to the cold and damp, when my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light, that split the night. Light I saw Ten thousand people Maybe more People talking Without speaking People hearing Without listening People writing Songs That voices Never share And no one dare Disturb the sound Said I know you don't know. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my word that I might teach you. Take my arm that I might reach you. But my word like silent raindrops And the people bowed and prayed To the neon god they made And the sun flashed out its morning And the words that it was forming And the sign said the words of the prophets Are written on the subway walls And tenement halls And whispered in the sound I'm going to take a quick break and turn this over to E. I'll be back in a few.
Clearly, I wasn't ready. So you got to have a few more sounds of silence. Wasn't he great? I get to hear him every day. So that's always a treat for me. So I know everybody looks forward to quarantines, and I get to hear him practice every day. So I, I get the previews, and it's kind of an emotional day for me today. It would have been my mom's birthday. She would have been 86 years old, and um, that's why I said it's, it's no coincidence that today's World Kindness Day. My mom took care of everybody, and she taught me a lot. So I have my RBG shirt on tonight just because she did so many great things for women, and RBG and I share the same birthday. And if I can be half as much of an inspiration to my daughters and my granddaughters as she was to women, that's, I will have comp accomplished a lot in my life. So happy birthday in heaven, Mom. I miss you every day. So let's get on to some more happy birthdays. Um, yesterday was Joe Dehaney's birthday, so happy birthday, Joe. You have one more year till you join my club. And then today is our friend Barb's birthday, and Barb and Phil are on every week. And so we all know Barb is here every priester, and, and she makes her famous salad, the TFS. And I, I won't tell you what that means because there are probably kids on tonight, but it's our, our very personal way of, of describing that meal. Um, and Barb also hates Neil Diamond, and Phil loves Neil Diamond. So that was your gift tonight, Barb, that Vic wasn't playing any Neil Diamond. And um, so we always have a great time with Barb. So have a really happy birthday tonight. Uh, Phil, no Neil Diamond at your house either, please. Tomorrow's our friend Mim's birthday. And then November 16th is Jeff Tosi's birthday. So Jeff, if you're on, well, even if you're not on, happy birthday. And then November 17th is Nikki Trumbull's birthday. So Nikki is the daughter of our friends, Linda and Kenny Stanton, and her husband, Sean, um, that his restaurant is the Iron Horse in Westwood. So remember, if you're gonna get takeout, patronize the Iron Horse. They have great stuffed cheeseburgers. So eat at the Iron Horse. Um, what else we got? COVID numbers? Uh, they're really climbing here in New Jersey. So. You know, I talk every week about how they've gone up. So again, remember September 28th, 6th, today, November 13th, 83. So wear your mask, social distance, pass the word along. You know, some people still aren't following the rules, but we gotta get there, the numbers are going up. And that's scary because the, the holidays are coming and we wanna be able to spend the holidays with our close families. but. We'll see what happens. If the numbers keep going up, it might not be. We all want to be here next year, right? And we all want to be here for our retirement parties because we're getting there. You know, Vic and I talk about this every day. How are we going to retire a little bit early? So we think we have it figured out. The kids will not get anything. You know, we have our saying usually when we're cruising, spending our kids' inheritance one cruise at a time. I've talked to them about it. They know better. Uh, okay. What else we got going on? Oh, really exciting news. So my son-in-law, Frank, as you know, um, was one of the COVID job tragedies, and he started his new job this week. So we're really exciting for him. He got this Mondo job at Prologis. So it's so exciting. So you really get a chance to see that when one door closes, another one really does open. And this is such a great opportunity for him. And they just got their house this summer. So we're, we're really excited for all of them. Um, Lukey and Lexi are back to virtual school though. In Elmwood Park, we're having little outbreaks here. So the school was open and they were closed. Then the middle school where Lexi goes was closed and Lukey's grammar school was open and then his closed and now hers is going to be closed until November 30th. So I think they should just call it a day and go back after Christmas, right? And let's just stop with the back and forth. It's really confusing for the kids. And I know they love to be with their friends, but it's really hard for them to be going in virtual, out of virtual, hybrid. They don't even know which direction they're going in. So we give them a lot of extra space. It has nothing to do with COVID. It has to do all with being grandparents, right? All the grandparents out there, we spoil those grandkids. That's our job. 
And so now we have a COVID excuse, right? So when we do all those things that their parents hate, you could say COVID. So sometimes it's not so bad. Um, so other great news. Um, if you, so sometimes we think we should introduce people on Quarantunes, right? You see the, the news feed going through and you see a lot of names. And so um, Satch is someone that Vic worked with and he's Jonathan Satriali. He's on every week and he lives in Massachusetts. And so pretty soon he and his wife Liz are going to have our first Quarren baby. So Liz is 37 weeks, so in the next couple of weeks, we will have such an exciting time. Like, it's, so we've, we've been through this whole pregnancy with them. And uh, so Satch, you, 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 know, you're, you have an obligation now. This is your Quarren baby. If you're thinking about names, don't use ours. <laughs> but I think that's pretty cool that you have a Quarren baby. So Liz, hang in there. I know this is the, the last couple of weeks are really tough. Um, I was saying before, our, my daughter Bree is December 6th, so I was very, very pregnant that Thanksgiving. So I remember the last thing I wanted to do was eat a lot of turkey. So hang in there, and uh, we'll get you through it with quarantunes. Let's see. Oh, Vic was talking about the auto train before. And uh, so some people were putting on the news feed that we should have, once COVID is over, um, we should have an auto train quarantine trip. Wouldn't that be great? So our friends Kathy and John Duback actually were supposed to take